Non-Americans of Reddit, what's the weirdest thing an American has said to you? I was asked if France is part of the United Kingdom. When I tried explaining him what the United Kingdom is, he told me England is no longer part of the UK because of Brexit. This, hurt so much. As much as I love my country, the people who inhabit it can be really stupid. Trust me, the people from other countries are equally as stupid. Americans are not unique in this. You want proof? Turn on British daytime TV. How long did you take you learn to use metric instead of normal measurements? He genuinely didn't understand that metric was a system we actually used every day, we weren't constantly having to mentally convert me instruments to feet or pounds to understand how big they really were. Maybe because Americans only really interact with metric, well, technically SI, in science class. Actually there's a video on YouTube where Neil deGrasse Tyson explains that Americans already do use the metric system in their everyday lives and probably don't even realize it. Yeah. We love our drugs. Thank God they're sold in metric. We gotta teach the kids somehow right? When an American asked me what it's like to have an accent. They thought that they had no accent and their voice was default basically. Do you have an accent? Uh, we all have accents. Reminds of that I once spoke to an American that was surprised that black Australian individuals had an Australian accent. It's so weird but you can also see it coming somehow in how they often think about race, the same thing that one was surprised that black Dutch individuals of course had Dutch names. Why didn't they walk around the Berlin Wall? This is actually a pretty good question, to the point that I can't think of the answer right now. If you mentally draw a half a city, inside another country, with the wall down the middle of the city, it does bring up the question of why you can't walk in from the back of the half you want to get to. Edit, the wall went all the way around West Berlin. This isn't something that gets emphasized in American history classes, I don't think. I was paying attention, and I don't remember being told this. Pretty sure there were soldiers at the wall. It's not that you physically couldn't climb over the wall. It's that you didn't want to. You could if you were fast enough and wearing a thick enough bulletproof vest. Wait, you all have IKEA? I'm Swedish. BuzzFeed turned this into a listicle and featured your comment in their tweet. Some URL. Some URL? Fuck BuzzFeed. You could sue them as your comment is your IP. You would lose, of course, as BuzzFeed has expensive lawyers. Then again. They may just remove it to not have to deal with the legal trouble. Canadian here. I was 7 and in Florida telling my new also 7 year old friend about our money system. I told her we don't have dollar or two dollar bills they are coins and called a loony and a toonie. She goes and asks her parents and they told her I was lying. Wait, there are one dollar notes? Where I live the smallest note is equivalent to slightly more than six dollars, anything less is coins. Yes Canada did have them until like 95 and US still does, I'm pretty sure lol. The typical stuff. Do you have cars slash trees slash dogs slash in Germany? Another favorite, is Hitler still alive? Yep we just decided his bad conscience would be punishment enough for the whole thing, he works for a NGO helping migrants now, crazy how people can change. I met an American who was convinced that we weren't allowed to say anything bad about Hitler as he was our big leader and that every German looks up to him. I'm sure they're very surprised that you don't have Nazi statues anymore either. Are your parents Democrats or Republicans? A. Have different political parties here love. I once had real difficulty trying to get a staunch American Republican to understand that we don't have any major Republican parties. He eventually asked so, how many Republicans do you have in Parliament? I answered, about six, but they can't take their seats because they refuse to swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen. I thought he was going to have a hemorrhage. They asked me if I spoke African. Maybe they meant Afrikaans? I hope. They definitely didn't. Nope, they absolutely did not. Poking fun at me with France stereotypes. I'm not from France. My parents are not from France, and I've never been to France. My first language is French, that's enough for Americans to treat me like I'm from France. You speak French? Anand baguette croissant. 
guy living in Congo. Confidently stupid. Belgian or Swiss? I met an American tourist who was adamant that my country was a home ruled territory under the US government. He said this during our nation's Independence Day. What is your country? Iceland. He assumed we shared a similar status with Puerto Rico. He was convinced of the error of his ways after confronting two other natives in a Google search. Wait what? Iceland was never even a US colony in the first place. I lived for a while in an old house in Somerset. It was once owned by Reverend Thomas Spott who traveled to America on the Mayflower. Had quite a few Americans turn up on the doorstep, there's a blue plaque, expecting me to drop everything and provide a house tour and have expert knowledge of Thomas Budd. As an American, I can kind of understand their line of thinking. Historical houses like that are often preserved and turned into tourist attractions in the US. Not sure if that's as common in England? Your country has been around a lot longer, so it's pretty normal for people to live in houses that are centuries old, right? Also, Americans tend to overestimate how important our history is to people in other countries, especially England. You get a lot of Americans who are shocked to find out that your schools don't cover the American Revolution nearly as in-depth as our schools, just for example. In my school, we learned about the Mayflower at age 6 and revisited the topic repeatedly over the years. To us, your house would have been a really fascinating historical place to visit, but to Brits, I guess it's probably more like oh huh. This guy was on the Mayflower. That's kinda cool, I guess. Like, what do you care if some guy who used to live at your house hundreds of years ago left the county? Can I have an Irish car bomb? Talking to a bartender in a Dublin pub. Ooh. Yikes. Safe to say they didn't get the drink they ordered and got a good talking to from the bartender. 1911 coming right up. One Sandy Hook, please. I think I'd be shot, and quite rightly. As a Brit, I had to bite my tongue when asked, Do you celebrate Independence Day? Which one? Honestly, if Brits recognized the Independence Days of every country that separated from them, they'd work like one day a week. You mean. Living the dream? I've been asked the Independence Day and Thanksgiving question pretty much every time I've gone to the US. They seem surprised that 4th July is not a holiday here. Are we supposed to celebrate that they successfully separated from us? Wait. Hmm. I live in the Southern Hemisphere. Talking to an American online in December, and I mentioned it was summer for me. She kept asking which month I was in kept insisting it must be June, and couldn't seem to wrap her head around the idea that it was simultaneously December and summer in the Southern Hemisphere. When I was six, I thought this too. I could see that logic if you're a little kid. I mean, you've heard of time zones so month zone seems entirely plausible if you were six. Oh no I thought well, the seasons are opposite, so the months must be too. I had a friend who did foreign exchange in the Southern Hemisphere, when I was six, for a year. When he got back I realized, oh, it is an opposite. Spaghetti with eggs kinda weird. That's a carbonara. Spaghetti with eels kinda weird. That's amore. An Austrian friend and I were told about about this magical thing they have in America called fireworks and how we should go see it at least once in our lives. China invented fireworks. <laughs> I swear on my mother's life that this happened. I was on a student exchange between my German school and a school in San Francisco in the late 90s. When the Americans came to visit us, we had a welcome party for them at a friend's place. That friend had a dog, and at some point he gave the dog a command in German. The dog obeyed, and one of the American kids asks how we managed to teach German to the dog. He wasn't joking either. He seemed convinced that all pets are somehow born with knowledge of the English language, but all other languages need to be taught to them. All I can see in my head is a my favorite Picard face palm gif. I know someone who bought a fully trained personal protection dog, a German shepherd from a couple who trains them, the couple uses German to train them on purpose and the owner then has to learn the commands in German, duh. 
they've been asked by a lot of people how their dog learned German. This is in the US. I'm French Canadian, I was in the States some years ago, I tried one of those fried chocolate bars, I'm not sure it's good, still debating myself on that one, and the waiter, recognizing by my accent I was not from there, asked me if I liked it, I said it was my first time eating that, etc., and a couple lines down our exchange, I found that he thought I had never eaten one before because it was somehow illegal in Canada to deep fry those, and maybe fruits too, I don't recall exactly. Like Health Canada forbade restaurants to deep fry chocolate bars. He was a nice person. How do you deep fry chocolate wouldn't it just melt on? It's coated in a batter, 